Following that, joining me in studio here is Simon Kabu, who is the CEO and founder of Bonfire Adventures, just to help us understand how best we can place Africa as a tourist destination. Welcome to Bottom Line Africa, sir. Thank you, Ashley. So I saw you smiling when the <laughs> story was being played. Maybe I can just let you comment about that. Uh, that issue of the, the Kabu women, uh, people can interpret it in different ways. Uh, first, uh, my own opinion is that uh, we need to respect our people, our women. They are still they, people. Some people say what uh, ladies can do, uh, what men can do, ladies can do better. Yes, but uh, there are so many ways that uh, we can attract uh, tourism. Apart from maybe the cave women, or apart from uh, uh, apart from the animals and the normal animals and 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 beat your coast. There are so many other ways I know we can attract women. Uh, we can attract uh, uh, tourism. Yes. Uh, I, I, I've, traveled, I've traveled quite a lot and I have seen other countries do, do quite a lot. Uh, like now we go to, to France, uh, you go at the effort hour, you find like over seven to nine million tourists in a year. Mm -hmm. That's just effort hour. Just, just a uh, something a structure uh, when you go to New York there's a Brooklyn uh, bridge uh, London th those bridges we can build those bridges here or even better ones or we can have things like that and we can be able at least to, to attract because uh, in the way uh, we market we market tourism in in Africa it's very different from the way uh, I think the other the other countries in the West uh, do it allow me to interrupt you say the way we market tourism in africa is different so then do you think enough has been done to market africa as a tourist destination uh i i, I would not want to be the judge but we can do better i am sure we can do better than what, what we are doing because um there are so in africa like now within the tropics where we are uh, our temperatures do not uh, do, do not change a lot some people, when there is winter, they go negative, negative something. As uh, right that that time in December, we are like between between maybe 19 to 26. You can imagine how many people would want to visit here yeah, that particular time. And if you compare uh, the the tropical islands that we have, the Seychelles, Mauritius, Zanzibar, they attract a lot of a lot of tourists. First, is because of the security. Uh, most people feel uh, feel comfortable when the places that they are is secure. That's one of the things that at least we need to do to attract uh, more tourism, more tourists. Then we need, I think, to think outside the box. Like now, for example, if I give just some examples that I can just think uh, of it, like Nairobi National Park. Nairobi is only a park, it's only a city that has a park within the city. The only in the world, you can imagine. So if if we we have excursions like excursions uh when we are in cities uh we go to excursions like now we can have excursion where every person who comes to nairobi for business would go for an excursion maybe a dinner at nairobi national park yes where we take people every day people are collected from different hotels and taken to nairobi national park for a, a dinner with some maybe extravaganzas maybe some cu uh, culture some music this time is this music the other time is this music you, you can imagine how it would be an, an excursion that is done every day. Mm. I think that I think we can do here in Kenya. I'm sure people are trying to do things, uh, but maybe we can put better policies to make sure that that is affected. Like, like what exactly? Like, like now Koinange Street. Mm -hmm. We can have uh, the muturas of this world. People, maybe Koinange Street is closed a certain day of the week. Maybe on a Friday, I'm just giving an example. And people have the local food, the gideris, the omenas. Then tourists come and taste and buy and taste. There's some music here. And th 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 that, that can be an every week affair or every day affair, maybe from from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. It can be like a tourist uh, attraction. You being a player in this tourism <laughs> sector, of course, and you're giving us some of the suggestions and uh, ideas that you may have to help us diversify our tourism. Mm -hmm. um, have you maybe taken this up to the ministry and suggested this? Uh, there are some that uh, I, I know 
when, when I interact with the stakeholders, there are some maybe on the, on the pipeline. Uh, I'm not the right person to deliver that information, but I'm sure something is being done. Uh, the coffee, uh, people can, can even come and see. I, I normally have tourists who come every three months to come and see how the coffee is made and I take all the way to I take them all the way to Nyeri and Kiambu mm-hmm. so uh, so that they're able to see how coffee is picked they go and pick water using the cans from the river mm-hmm. and they they slaughter a goat and they they have uh, they have the mutura you see they feel those are some of the things that we need to think outside outside the box it's not only the animals or the the bits that we, we can be able think, to attract uh, to, uh, tourism from okay allow me to come back to the country of course and just get into some statistics holiday leisure remains the major reason for traveling uh, in kenya with around 73.6 percent while business and conference contributed around 12.1 percent in the year 2017-2018 that's around 85.1 percent in total um we're seeing countries like Rwanda sponsor football teams and yet Kenya is known to be a better economy. Do you think this is a, say, a route that we should take perhaps, sponsoring and doing more? Uh, why not? We, we, we can do that as a part of, of maybe a, a marketing, but, but still, even the corporates, the countries that have greater number of tourists have the locals or the domestic people taking the, the much of that. Uh, which I think we do. There are so many Kenyans who have never been to Masai Mara, for example. I'm just giving an example of who have never been to Lake Victoria. Uh, we need to sample our country first. We'll be the good ambassadors uh, for this country if we have traveled. Yeah. Those people who think going for a, a holiday is just going to Mombasa and going to Masai Mara. No. There are so many other places that you can be able to. There are some rocks, uh, some in Kakamega, you can be able to go view. There are some hikes. And apart from, uh, ap- apart from the leisure, there's the sports tourism, hikes, and going. Even so many people who have never gone to Logonon, just here. You see, a place that uh, those are the, the creators that uh, when people in Tanzania go to to Gorongoro. That's a, okay, the Gorongoro kita might be a little big, but the same, more or less the same thing. What uh, about those ones who can't afford it? Uh, in fact, what I like to tell people is that uh, uh, packages or holidays are not as expensive as, as they are perceived. It's only that uh, people do not maybe want to get the information or they ignore the information because the money that people use when they, they are here in town is the same thing, the local joint. It's the same money that you use to travel to Masai Mara, 10,000, 13,000 for three days. Imagine including transport, that is the amount that would use to go to Masai Mara. Mm-hmm. If, and when you, when you travel there, you, you, you assist other people that, there are those people who sell the, the kikois, uh, sell the souvenirs. It's good for even for, for us to buy. How many of us have kept souvenirs Kenyan souvenirs in their houses, very few. So those are some of the things. Again, uh, some people, I think, I think we can do better as uh, as a, a country. We think so. Even the corporate, like now, uh, last week, I remember KTN had gone to Sarovashaba and they were, uh, they were broadcasting from there. Those are the things that we need to think about. How many corporates can say, this week, let's go and work from wherever we can work from. Let's go to Laikipi and work from there. Let's go to Ambosil and work from there. That will be assist, assist to help, uh, to help uh, at least uh, um, the market, the, the domestic tourism. Again, I think that uh, I think I, I think should happen so, uh, so that the tourism can in Kenya can be enhanced. Now that we have all the international international media houses based in Nairobi, mm-hmm. and when uh, something happens in Darfur or something happens in Somalia. Uh, they broadcast saying uh, they broadcast about what is happening, uh, people fighting and all that. Then they say, uh, reported from Nairobi. You see, a person who is there who thinks Africa is one country thinks Nairobi. That's where we are. We are fighting. That's something that maybe the government need to put a lot of and tell guys. You need to say this is not happening in Nairobi. It's not happening in Kenya. It's happening in Darfur or Somalia. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, let's talk about the aviation sector. Now, according to 
the statistics. Currently, there are around 731 airports, 419 airlines on the continent around that. Supports 6.9 million jobs at around $18 billion in economic activity. But the sector still faces a number of challenges, including weak infrastructure, high ticket prices, poor connectivity, and like, or lack of liberalization. How do we tackle these challenges? Uh, I think, actually, the issue of aviation is a very tricky issue because first, one thing that we need to learn is that these guys are in business and they have to make money. Uh, and if you don't have, I, I know a little bit about aviation because I have dealt with, with, with them a lot. Mm -hmm. If there's no enough, enough, enough passengers at in route, it means that uh, the, the supply and demand, the law of supply and demand, the, the price has to go up. But if it's the other way, uh, if there are more people, it's a chicken and egg what came first. Uh, if there are more people uh, using a, a certain route, it means that the price can go down. In fact, the price of, of tickets has gone down considerably. Mm -hmm. Yes. With the, with the SDR, when the SDR came, I think uh, the Mombasa route, uh, right now with 10,000 you can travel to Mombasa. Before that it was around, the minimum could be around maybe 18 and 20. Uh, Kisumu, uh, Kisumu, Eldoret, so many uh, uh, smaller airlines have come into place and I think they are applying now that route. Yes. It shows that there is enough demand and I'm sure the, the cost of, of the ticket has gone down and it will it continue going down. Yes. Okay. As Bonfire Adventures, even as we wind up, have you experienced cases of tourists asking for more than you cannot offer? Yes. Oh, uh, How exactly do you <laughs> handle that? Every time, most tourists uh, ask for more than what maybe uh, can, can be offered. Because I think, uh, like now, Kenyan, if I talk about Kenyan tourism, mm -hmm. uh, Kenyan tourists, when they are going to maybe a park, you tell them to go camping, they will ask you, no, 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 I came from a good house wherever I came from, you want me to go camping? <laughs> but we tell them it's the experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want you people to experience a different kind of uh, environment. Or, uh, you, you, we want you to be in the wild, not the good uh, bed or the good house that you left, wherever you left it. Uh, just uh, go to the wild and camp, it will be another experience. Uh, that is very different from the, the inbound clients. The Wazungus are very happy to go camp. They say, yes, I want, I want to camp. I want to camp on the ground. But for our people, uh, we think that uh, uh, a holiday is something better than what you have in the house. Mm -hmm. With time, we are trying to uh, refresher them. I think they are, they are learning because some people are doing, you see, things like skydiving in Diani, those people are doing zip lining, uh, budget jumping. Mm -hmm. they, they are doing those, the, those excursions that were never used to be a Kenyan. Uh, but at least people are working and, and uh, they, they are doing it better than the way th they were before and with the SDR, uh, I'm so happy that now in Kenya, uh, most people, Mombasa, it's like like this. People can travel and it has improved tourism uh, to the cost like uh, a thousand percent. And most hotels that used to close over low season, that, that, that's from April to June or to July. Mm -hmm. These days, they can only close for renovation, not because they have lack plans. So it's a work in progress. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Simon Kabu, who is the CEO.